All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're back. This is a Marine Disposition heard live around the world on Wind Talkers Radio Network and on Blog Talk Internet Radio. We want to welcome all of our fellow Marines around the world from Sochi, Russia, Kazan, Russia, the six counties of Northern Ireland in New Zealand. Thank you, Bobby, for getting out the uh, the commercial breaks. We just have a little problem there with one of the commercials being really soft. We'll get that taken care of over the next two or three days. And uh, we really appreciate the input from our listeners out there to let us know that the volume was a little low. Uh, we're going to go directly uh, out there. We've got Mr. Bob Chapman, the international forecaster. You heard his commercial there uh, in the song. You will hear it again throughout the show, throughout the day, uh, as you hear it throughout the week. Uh, so there's no excuse for you not to get in touch with Mr. Bob Chapman, the international forecaster.com. That's the three W's, the International Forecaster, F-O-R-E-C-A-S-T-E-R dot com. Welcome back, Mr. Chapman. We have a caller online here uh, from uh, from out there. I do believe it's Colorado Al, and uh, Colorado Al probably has a, a unique question for you, and we'll just go to him and let, let him just come on in and welcome you back to the second uh, second half of the hour. Come on in there, caller. Uh, yes, uh, good afternoon, Bob and Drew. Uh, it's being reported that the bondholders are going to be paid off, Bob, but unfortunately the U.S. government is going to own nearly three-quarters of GM, and is this not uh, the absolute definition of fascism? Without a question, and they're going to get paid 10 to 15 cents on the dollar, and they're going to get paid in common stock in the new company. And that is not the way uh, bankruptcies have been handled in the Anglo-Saxon world ever. And uh, well, how that works is that you go bankrupt and you gather all the assets in and the people who get paid off first are the bondholders. Then the creditors, business creditors. And then if there's anything left over, it goes to the shareholders and there never is anything left over for that. And so uh, the United States government has given us a new fascist model for bankruptcy. What is the U.S. government doing in the automobile industry with GM or what's left of it? Uh, there's no reason for them to be in that business. GM and Chrysler both should have gone bankrupt years ago. They've been running deficits for years. They were poorly run companies. The unions wanted too much. The management wanted to loot the company. They didn't want to work. It was awful. And they deserve to go under. And, of course, it was helped and expedited by foreign manufacturing. And that is what I was talking about earlier, which is we need tariffs because free trade and globalization does not work. I agree. Uh, Chrysler should have been allowed to go under back in 1980. They never should have been bailed out. Even though they did, quote, pay back the loans early, it was off the uh, tax-paying money from, uh, from the military contracts. And we can't really have this. We 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 have a, we have a situation now, Bob, where you're being award, you're being rewarded for failure. And in Japan, when you fail, you fall on your sword, literally, don't you? Yeah, we gotta get them some swords. Yeah, Drew and Bob, thank you very much for my short brief time. I'll see you in the second hour, Drew. Yes, sir. Thank you, Colorado Al. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Mark Twain wrote, "A person who won't read has no advantage over one who can't read." Mark Twain said that in 1898, uh, mere access to the courthouse doors does not by, not by itself assure proper functioning of the adversary process of the courts. Uh, Third Good Marshall said that, and that's what's happening, ladies and gentlemen. We are lacking our due diligence of taking control of our of what Naomi Wolf says. Uh, we need to be. Uh, governing our government, not not being run by the government. We run the government. Uh, Mr. Chapman, uh, uh, Liz in California comes at, at, in and she says there are reports of grave concern over the upcoming June gold option expiration, and if too many deliveries are ordered, uh, the commercial shorts would be under major stress for some expo for exposure for their naked shortening shorting uh, this will eventually be caught in a will be caught in a blind and difficult uh, situation on contracts. 
what uh, what say you in uh, what is seen at your level of uh, the financial market? Well, if these ladies out there keep on getting so smart, we're going to have to have them on the program <laughs> because she's absolutely right. And uh, I don't talk about this because it's, it's, it's technical stuff, but um, I, I do talk about it in the International Forecaster almost daily. And uh, we have a, a situation in, in the June month uh, for June delivery that if uh, uh, about 35 to 50 percent of those who have contracts take delivery in gold, then uh, they can't deliver and normally, historically, it's been about one half of one percent to one percent would take delivery, and now it's running thirty, thirty-five, forty percent. And uh, if they do that, uh, it either one or two things are going to happen: uh, either the United States government comes in and gives them the gold to make delivery. Uh, that's your gold, incidentally, uh, if in fact they have any gold. Uh, either that or they go under. And uh, you know, again. They should go under. I mean, the, the Commodity Futures Trading Corporation knows exactly what's going on. We've told them over and over and over again over the past 25 years what's being done on those exchanges. They know it. The United States government is saying, let them do it because they want the prices down. If the United States government was not manipulating the gold and silver market, silver would be $100 an ounce and gold would be $3,000 an ounce right now. And that's where it's going. You know, and all you people out there, and there's a lot of you, because I hear from you by emails from this program, who own gold and silver shares, they had an unbelievably spectacular day today. And some of the stocks we recommend, like Agnico Eagle, we were up $3.49 a share. Uh, gold Corp up 108 uh, <clears throat> Uh, mine finders was up 14 cents to a new recent high. Uh, silver standard was up 244. These things are booming. And they're gonna keep right on booming. And I'm happy that you took our advice and, and got some shares and got some coins and, and they're, they're going up as well. I want to list, we've got about uh, 20 to 30 listeners in the chat room that is uh, offered uh, through the Blog Talk Radio switchboard. And if any of you listeners out there in that Blog Talk Radio chat, board, chat room want to ask Mr. Chapman a question, I do monitor that chat room so you can come in and pop up a question uh, there. Uh, I also uh, have from uh, from Lisa in Seattle. Where's it at, Lisa? Where you, we, you, you got interrupted here. You had a good question. I want to get it for us. Uh, Mr. Chapman, uh, I just found out that the biggest gold producer in the world is China, but they are not putting uh, their output uh, in the, that in, putting their output out and directing it to the open market. Russia is also a significant gold producer, and none of its output is being directed to the open market. Uh, what what does this uh, what kind of uh, insight do you see with these two countries? Uh, hoarding the gold that they're that they're harvesting from the earth, but they're not putting it on the open market. Well, again, I've got to say, you girls out there are getting so smart; it's unbelievable, and you're really getting on top of things. And I think that's absolutely wonderful. And uh, it's not only this subject, but other subjects that concern your life, your social life, your political life. Your, ec your economy and your finance and, and how to protect yourself, protect what little wealth you have. And most of us don't have lots of wealth, believe me. Um, you're absolutely correct. China's the biggest producer. They haven't sold gold for probably six years. Uh, they are now, uh, per an announcement two weeks ago, uh, they announced that they have been secretly uh, um, purchasing gold uh, that was domestically produced and had made deals with other countries secretly to buy gold from them. And um, they're going to continue to do so because they don't want all those dollars. Uh, how many they got, I don't know. It's somewhere between 1.5 and 2.2 trillion, an astronomical sum. And that's why they've been buying commodities. And Russia's been doing the same thing. And there are other countries that are doing it. We just don't hear about it. I know Venezuela's doing it. And uh, and uh, Iran 
And so uh, there's less and less gold coming to the market. And uh, what does that mean? That means higher prices. And so uh, the caller or the emailer is absolutely correct.